Good morning, everyone. <coughs> Boys who don't know me, my name is Roman, and today I will tell you about the vectorization of the engine that was that was not supposed to be vectorized. Uh, and this engine is called Columnstor, and that is the major OLAB engine for MariaDB. Uh, it has some properties, fancy properties, like it is column-oriented, uh, and under the hood it is basically a massive parallel processing software uh, that have a number of nodes potentially. Uh, and its storage uh, schema is uh, organized with two tiers. First, there is a data distribution between nodes, and uh, every node have, have a number of Linux mounts that we call DB roots. Here's the schema for that. Many of you should know what uh, vectorization is, vectorization of a software is, but for those who are not familiar, I will touch the grounds with that. Uh, here are two pseudocode snippets that demonstrate the processing over scalar uh, values. And uh, there, is an, uh, there is a counterexample for a vectorized execution. As you can see at the top, we are talking about this particular expression, a simple one, a, mathem a mathematical addition. And on the left, uh, we see that we iterate uh, over the rows in a certain row group, and we plain just get the value of the column and sum these values up of these columns. After that, we uh, append the resulting value into the output. And that's all. That's how scalar processing works. The vectorized world, uh, we iterate over a vector that might consist of a number of scalar values. It's usually the power of two, like two values of 4 or 8, 16, and uh, we sum up these vectors. And uh, what it basically, it, it is basically the same what uh, just algebra, uh, algebra math does for vectors. We sum up uh, separate uh, scalar values of these vectors, and in the end we have a vector uh, that have these sums. And we take this vector and add it into the output. So basically, we we'll do, let's say, four or eight or 16 math additions uh, at a time. So to go on, I need to share some context with you uh, about the internal representation of uh, data in Column Store. And we call it RG Data. Uh, and the format is pretty straightforward. There is a, a fixed size header. After that, there is an array of rows. We call this part a typed column, uh, typed column root buffer. And this typed column buffer consists of a number of uh, fixed size columns. And the sizes are power of two, starting from one and uh, end up with 16 bytes. And there is a potential string stop buffer where variable size strings belongs to. So looking at this format, uh, one might ask about how it is suitable for vectorization. And you will be right, because you know what? To get a vector, to collect a vector, you need to run so-called gather operation. Uh, and unfortunately, in the SIMD world, uh, single instruction multiple data, that is an acro acronym for vectorization, widely used. Uh, there are some architectures or instruction sets that, doesn't have, uh, that don't have these uh, gather instruction. For example, a widely spread, uh, widespread uh, SSC 4.2 available at x86 architecture doesn't have the gather. So, Mm, to collect this uh, separate values to construct the vector that I uh, told you about in the previous slide, you need to do it in a scalar manner. Basically, iterate over separate rows and uh, extract the value over certain columns, let's say column one. Mm, that's not very fancy, not very fast. Uh, moreover, uh, this particular format, uh, it cannot enforce the certain alignment for, let's say, column two. You cannot always tell that uh, its address starts with the, uh, it is aligned with 16 bytes. So 
mm, very unfortunately for us, most of compilers uh, uses uh, most of compilers use the aligned version of the instructions. For example, uh, the uh, thing that we step over a lot uh, that is a move DQA instruction uh, that basically moves the vector of data to some other place. And you know what? If you start, if you run this instruction and uh, uh, supply it with the unaligned address, you will end up with SIGWARE uh, signal. So we basically crash. Fortunately, there is an unaligned version of most instructions, but compilers don't allow don't allow us to uh, control when we put when it put the aligned version and when it doesn't. So unaligned memory usually is a big problem for the vectorized executor. Uh, there are two potential uh, potential move workarounds for this. One of that I already mentioned used to unaligned version of the uh, instructions, uh, and another one is to use this attribute describing the structure itself. But both of them are impractical. It basically takes a lot of code to just describe that you need. There is a third uh, workaround, but it puts enormous overheat. It's basically uh, to enforce that all the columns are aligned. So we, have, we end up with the, a lot of extra memory that aren't used. So with that context, I would like to describe you what was the state of affairs uh, just before I start the project of vectorization column store. Uh, first of all, to just highlight how it was, there was a flag, no tree vectorize. That basically tells there will, there will be no auto vectorization of loops, no matter what. That is a good thing. I suppose the, uh, back in time, the authors of Column Store, they fight with that problem with unaligned memory. Because if you have suddenly uh, moved the QA somewhere and uh, you have unaligned memory you end up with crashing and nobody tells you why because then in uh, optimized code you see that the execution points to a certain instruction that doesn't correlate with actual instruction that is uh, running on the process now where, where it crashes uh, so the second point is there there were actually no suitable loops for after vectorization even in places where you naturally could see the auto vectorization where it fits naturally like uh, the uh, mm, the scanning part that operates with vectors uh, of 80 kilobytes uh, even there there were there was scalar processing like we iterates all over all values in the buffer for a value, we check whether it uh, it is a null value or deleted value. We have special uh, special values for that, magic ones. And after that, we uh, try to apply the filters that we have, a simple one. And if uh, the filter satisfies, we just uh, put it on into output. Uh, so this pseudocode uh, correlates with this particular example, with this particular expression. So, given all that, I arrived uh, at the goals of this vectorization project. When you hear uh, about vectorization, in most cases, that is about uh, speeding the things up. Like, if you process four, four, four things at a time, four values at a time, it will be faster when you process one, the one value at a time. So, the main goal is to make things faster. Where it, when it is possible and where it is possible is an important part just because there are some SQL operators that in my opinion naturally uh, are scalar oriented or row oriented it is still arguable as I point here so if you have your own opinion I'm happy to hear you uh, but in my opinion hash group by hash join and order by they are all, all row oriented that means that it is easy or has less overheat to process them when the data is, oriented, is uh, in a row format, not in a columnar one. So, uh, and to make things some, uh, to complicate something, uh, to make it a bit complicated, we need to support two uh, widespread architectures. 
So the vectorization have another parameter. Mm. So let's define a number of uh, issues that we need to to resolve whilst we're doing this. The properties of the uh, mm, You cannot change all of the processing from scalar to a vectorized version in one go, in one try. You cannot do it overnight. Night. So I decided to pick a certain faci a specific facility that it is easy to change and uh, where I can see the outcome clearly. And for that purpose, I decided to take the scanning part that uh, I already mentioned that works with the vectors of a fixed size. And uh, this scanning works with the uh, column types that fits uh, into the eight bytes, like one byte char or uh, four byte integers. And also this scanning uh, processes the simple uh, filtering term that consists of uh, uh, comparison operators and some logical functions. And uh, as I mentioned, the morsel size, uh, morsel size of this facility is uh, Eight kilobytes, and that corresponds uh, with the one thousand one kilo thousand uh, to eight thousand values, uh, because we have different uh, uh, column types from one byte to sixty. At this snippet, you can see the pseudocodes for scalar execution of this facility, and that's basically a core of the execution. Uh, and let's consider this example that we already see. We just try to uh, pick up all the column values that equals to 42. And then in scalar, what, what we do? We iterate over values, and then in the buffer we compare whether they have a special meaning or not. And if they don't, we try to filter, uh, we try to apply this filter, equal 42. And if uh, the filter doesn't, uh, doesn't work, so we either go to another value or we output uh, the value into we uh, put the value into output if uh, it equals with the 42 mm, the vectorized execution is a bit more complicated is a bit more involved because we compare the vectors let's say we are working with the begin not begin integer column so integer column uh, have four values in, in SSC 4.2. So we try to compare four values at a time. And as a result, we have a null mask. A null mask is basically the, the bits that are set to one if the uh, equality is true and uh, they are zeros if they're not. After we uh, search for special values, we make a bit, uh, run a bit operation, be that, and we get a filter mask. After filter, uh, after filter mask, uh, we iterate over all potential filters. And what does it mean? Mm, this argument, filter vector, it's basically a vector that consists of 442 values. And we compare it with the values vacuum vector. And if it's, uh, if filter mask, uh, have some values, have some ones set, then we store it into the output. And I will tell about this particular routine that stores the uh, resulting potentially potentially um, satisfying the filter values into the output. Uh, an important part is that there might be leftovers because you cannot process all the values. Let's say we have not uh, 8192 values but we have one less so we have something left the three values that must be processed in a scalar manner so the thing is to the code is very good and fine but unfortunately there are a number of parameters that must be taken into account uh, for example the size of the columns that affects uh, on how my how many values are in the vector itself like you can have two values for integer 64, you can have four values for 30 in 32, and so on, 8, 16. Uh, 
So this is, uh, this is parameter number one. Another parameter is that uh, the first parameter, the number of values in the vector, affects the second. Basically, the uh, uh, synth instructions have different names. We have different instructions to process different types of vector. That is natural. And there are also floats. And floats are processed in... Uh, they, they have another set of uh, synth instructions to, to use. And there are also and to architectures that must be taken into account. So we have a number of parameters that somehow need to be introduced into that pseudocode, pseudocode that I shared previously. Okay, here we go. Uh, there are a number of approaches how to tackle this parameter problem. The first is, uh, is to use a header-only template leaps uh, the most suitable that I personally find when I start the project was seamed DE, that means seamed everywhere, and uh, Agnes Fox vector class. And this one is interesting because it contains uh, some routines uh, for vector types that uh, that doesn't exist naturally. I mean, they they have no uh, instructions, seamed instructions, but they are. Uh, uh, they composite that consists of a number of other seamed operations, seamed instructions. The second option, uh, the second option would be to use the function multi-versioning uh, feature of the compiler. Uh, both uh, JCC and Clunk supports these. And what it is in a nutshell, uh, is if you take a look at this uh, the snippet on the bottom left. You can see that we can define a number of architectures that uh, have a different version of the same full function. It looks like overloading in some cases, but uh, the overload factor here is not the parameter of the function, uh, but the architecture. So internally, uh, Compilers uses the concept called I functions, I fund, and that is uh, a fancy name for a R uh, RTLD dispatcher that is run in the very beginning of a runtime, and it picks the proper version of the function itself. So, as you can see, the preprocessor basically. Uh, masks all the code that doesn't belong that, that that is not uh, uh, that is not available on this particular machine. So in the end, uh, there will be a pointer to a function that is set on the, by the runtime when the uh, runtime dispatcher is, uh, chooses the appropriate version of a function. So we have these two options. We also have a number of other options that are by its nature uh, JIT oriented. Uh, just in time translation, I mean, by you. And uh, these are the tensor labor libraries that are widely used in machine learning. Like, if you consider a vector to be a tensor, uh, one dimensional tensor, so you can just use all the primitives that Leaps uh, provides to it. Uh, unfortunately, this option have a very high change cost. If we are to use one library, you cannot easily switch and start using another library. It is like this. So, um, to be honest, I uh, I have my master thesis that I wrote recently on this uh, option, and I wrote the uh, proof of concept code for this part. But I find it very, how to say this, clumsy. It's basically. Um, uh, it forces uh, to change a lot of code just to use this library. It doesn't look very attractive, to be honest. And the last option is to use the plain G to produce filtering cores, like that pseudocode that I showed you. Uh, it can be written in a JIT, but JIT itself, it's a complex beast. Like to describe the function itself, it takes a lot. And given all the variability, all the parameters that I mentioned, it makes it even more complicated and involved. So uh, there is a recent edition. Uh, the guys from uh, 
Tim Gubner from CVI, they reported on this uh, on uh, VLDB on 2021, if I'm not mistaken, with this paper. Uh, they produced, uh, this is not the, the only thing that I see, but they produced the DSL that describes the uh, runtime. What does it mean? You have a special language that allows you to uh, just define what are the operations, but the uh, corresponding translator, Fuji, they call it, it can translate the uh, this DSL into the mm, either mix of scalar and vector process processing, and uh, at the same time, it takes into account what kind of seamed instructions uh, sets do you have available at the machine. That's very appealing thing. Uh, however, uh, the this is the concept. These guys are from. Uh, academia, so it's very far from being production grade ready. Nevertheless, it's very it's very tempting to use that one. So we consider it four approaches. We consider it four approaches and uh, uh, we have four, but we need to pick only one. So we need to choose. There should be some consideration of why did we pick one over another. So uh, the main decision that I made looking into all these options is to that we have to somehow tell that we are vectorized now. So we forced to run column store only if there is at least SSC 4.2 or ARM Neon uh, instruction sets are available on the platform. Otherwise we just stop uh, and uh, considering all the things together, I decided that uh, we will go with the first option, and that is a template header only uh, library. Unfortunately, we cannot use the existing libraries like Sim Everywhere or Agnes Fox Vector Class uh, out of the box because we have uh, a number of parameters, like we have a different. Uh, uh, vector size, uh, column, column, uh, column sizes, and uh, it corresponds with the different vector sizes. And it was not easy to translate into the uh, primitives that are used by these libraries. So we basically rewrote a uh, library, uh, inv reinvent the bicycle once again, unfortunately. Uh, however, this uh, library uh, was. Uh, was handy to describe that core to the code that I already shared with you. And here on the right, you can see the snippet of the class uh, that basically describes the processor that takes into account the type of the vector. And that uh, vector type basically uh, tells how many, how many scalar values you have inside. And as you can see, it has a number of types that are uh, rendered in uh, compile time. And there are a number of functions that are used by that uh, scanning code. And as you can see, these functions basically use the uh, uh, primitives that uh, are defined in the libraries itself. I need to mention that with this approach, we only support the SSC 4.2 and ARM Neon. Uh, there is no IVX and uh, SVE instruction sets are used. So, mm, I probably won't show you the whole code and the uh, other things because it's uh, there are a lot of lines in there, and uh, if you are interested, uh, you can go into the uh, our, our, into our repository and take a look yourself. However, here are the results of the project. Uh, we implemented the vectorization for x86 uh, that was implemented in um, uh, column store 6.x, uh, and uh, a bit later after that, like six uh, months later, we implemented it for uh, ARM64, and that was made by a JSOC student, last year JSOC student. Uh, uh, to be honest, I was very disappointed with the results because the micro benchmarks demonstrates like 10x speed up. That is great. 
I love it. Unfortunately, when it comes down to the real world uh, filtering intensive queries, it only gives us uh, 30 to 40 percent speed up. That's not that's not huge. It's not even what I expected. However, this fact uh, made me wonder what's wrong with that. And uh, I discovered a major bottleneck that we have in software in our software that basically prevents the vectorization or any other speed up uh, that we potentially introduce, like JIT, uh, to demonstrate the effect. And these two are the shared uh, uh, synchronization primitives, basically mutex that. The first one is a lookup structure that is used to to look whether this block is already used by another by another transaction. Uh, we call it VSS lookup structure, and it is shared. It is shared and used by every block access. Another uh, mutex that affects the performance, uh, basically reduces the performance from the vectorization, is the block hash access mutex. That's a widespread thing uh, for for database engines that have a that have a common uh, buffer cache. Mm. So all the scans also use it, and uh, you can imagine how often it is accessed and uh, there is a contention on both these structures. So I have the uh, work in progress uh, PR that basically gives me a 2x sped up comparing to the uh, current uh, current code. So that looks promising already. It's not still 10x that I saw, but nevertheless it's 2x already access. That makes me more happy. So. Um, there are lots of plans in this field uh, because the uh, this proof of concept patch that I mentioned it uh, it basically uh, gives me some hope that there will be a significant speed up. So I will uh, finish that patch first because it unblocks uh, not only vectorization effects but all uh, but all other speed up uh, effects. Uh, and the next fields, the way we want to apply the vectorization would be the uh, group by. And I hope that uh, Teresa will be working on this. Uh, there, there, is a, there is a special implementation of group by that uh, leverages the Robin Hood, uh, the original Robin Hood hash map. And there is a very attractive loop that might be vectorized easily. And uh, this loop is uh, very often, used very often, so we can decrease the lookup time for this hash map. Uh, and to be honest, I want to apply this function multiversioning that I told you about previously, because it would allow us to leverage all the instruction sets available at this particular platform. Like, if you have AVX512, why not use it? So I want to try this. Uh, but uh, so the vertical version in, in column store, how does it work? Because uh, you usually have that, uh, you have at least a transaction ID that makes says is this visible or not that you have to go through. Mm, I don't think that I get the question because multi function version works in uh, when the runtime starts, when the software starts. And yeah, it just puts the pointer to the function into appropriate place. And after that, the software uses this pointer. Like there is a dispatch. No, no, but I mean internally in the multi version. So what does the multi version in ah, the multi version detection in column start? Uh Monty, can we talk about this yeah. a bit later? Because it's no, it's I, away I, from the topic of this this of this talk. But I can surely yeah. tell you about the transaction support and multi not no, multi. I mean, just it, 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 is it checking that does this value exist in in an array? It does it work that way. Oh. Uh, it's a long story, I will tell you after that, if you don't mind. So, the second, and this would be a major effort to incorporate the uh, wide known Apache Arrow project. That is basically the format uh, that was, from the beginning, uh, it was uh, called a vector friendly. What does it mean? They have a format that differs from 
from uh, that RG data that I showed you in the beginning. It basically stores all the values as a columns, not at the rows. And that makes it uh, very easy to iterate, to start iterating over the vector values in this uh, column. Uh, however, as I said, it's a major effort because it takes a lot to change, a lot of changes. So we'll do it gradually, partially replacing, play, uh, ref replacing and refactoring code. Uh, after that, uh, there is another potential. Uh, optimization for a group by. Uh, when you have a group of rows, you can calculate the hash values for these rows doing the group by, hash group by, or hash join, oh, going, iterating over the column values. Yeah, like you can, you can first uh, multiply the values by a certain value. And after that, you can move the uh, results left to right. Uh, and do this in a vectorized manner, processing four, eight, or 16 values at a time. That looks tempting and should speed up things because hash calculation is uh, used everywhere and it's used often. Uh, another option is to use to boost an order flat map. I didn't put it, but uh, it is available since boost 1.81. Uh, it is a recent edition, like October, maybe December 2022. And uh, if you are interested, you should be interested in into the internals of this hash map and why it is in, why it is tempting. You should take a look at this paper. Uh, this is the first known, uh, a first uh, open sourced uh, version of the hash map that has a seemed based speed up for look for hash map lookups. I will not look into details of this uh, technique, but uh, I suggest you to take a look yourself. And the last thing, but uh, very important, but it is a bit far from from now, is the auto vectorization with JIT. Because the JIT itself, uh, let's say the fact that uh, uh, LLVM is the uh, the main platform to produce the JIT code, JIT symbols. Uh, it can optimize, there are some optimization passes that allows you to change the loops that's suitable for auto vectorization, uh, and that means there is a, they are written in a certain form, uh, and replace these loops with the vectorized form. Uh, but as I said, JIT takes a lot of time to produce symbols, and this, this thing is even more complicated. So with that, I would like to thank you. And if you have questions and if we have time, 